All right, our periodic table. Now we're going to start learning about ions and ion formation. You'll hopefully remember this from grade 9 as, as well. But uh, we'll just refresh a few concepts. When we take a look at the periodic table, column 1 uh, on our periodic table, right up here where hydrogen is, this is column 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and you get the idea how this works. Knowing what column number you're working with can be very useful. Because knowing the column number will help you figure out how many valence electrons an atom might have. And knowing how many valence electrons an atom might have can then help you determine the charge that, that atom will take when it becomes an ion. So remember, when an ion is formed, an ion is formed by gaining or losing electrons. Now, remember, electrons are really small. They have very little mass. This is what allows them to be mobile. They're really the only thing that can leave an atom. Now, an atom's goal is to become more stable. And to become more stable, that would be equivalent to what a noble gas has as an electron configuration, meaning the same number of outer electrons, i.e. full valence shells. Okay? Our valence shell, when you hear the word valence, that talks about the outer shell. So that word is going to come up. Our valence shell contains the valence electrons, which are the electrons in the outer shell. Plain and simple. So if we go back to our periodic table and we take a look, We've got our columns, and what we'll notice is hopefully you've seen the trend by doing some bohr rutherford diagrams, that elements that are in the first column in group 1, those elements all have one valence electron. Elements in group 2 will have two valence electrons. Then you probably noticed elements in group 13, because we usually skip the transition metals, if you remember grade 9. So we go to column 13, and we notice, oh, those ones have three valence electrons. Column 14 has four valence electrons. And you'll quickly note, if you're following along, that knowing the column number can help us determine the number of valence electrons. So one for column one, two for column two. Column 13 has three. Notice I underline the three there. Four in column 14, five in column 15, six if you're in column 16, seven valence electrons when you're in column 17 and eight valence electrons when you're in the very last column where the noble gas is at. Now this is great because quickly looking at this, if I know what column the element is, I know how many valence electrons it will have. Plain and simple. And knowing the number of valence electrons then allows us to predict the ionic charge that this atom will take when it gains or loses electrons. Now, if you want to think about gaining and losing electrons to, forming, to form an ion, you need to think about what's going to be easiest for the atom. So if we know an element has three valence electrons, and I'm going to use a short form for electrons, if it has three valence electrons, and it wants to become an ion, it has to get to a full outer shell. So an example we could use for this would be boron. If we use the example of boron having three valence electrons, looking back at its or up for diagram, we have our nucleus with our protons in there. We've got five protons. We've got our neutrons in the nucleus. Our neutrons are six. And we have two electrons in the first orbit, three electrons in the second orbit. So this valence shell, the outermost shell, the one right in here, that outer shell, 
it's got only three electrons. To become a full shell, it needs to have eight, because remember, the second shell can hold up to eight electrons. So you have to consider what's going to be easier, because with atoms, they want to do, they want to form the ion that takes the least amount of energy to do. So when we look at this, we have to either lose three electrons, so we're going to lose three electrons, or gain five electrons. Now, what do you think is going to be easier energetically? Is it going to be easier to lose three things or to gain five things? And the trick is to always think about whatever number is smaller, that's probably the easier thing that's going to occur. So in this case, when we have something like boron, it will lose three electrons. By losing the three electrons, it goes down to a full outer shell. Because that shell is now empty, we move down to a shell that is full. Remember, the first shell can only hold maximum two electrons. Once it has a full outer shell, it's a nice stable ion. And instead of writing the symbol B, because it's an ion now, so our boron ion, we're going to use the symbol B, and then we represent the charge. By you losing three electrons, we have now created an ion that has a positive charge. There's more protons than there are electrons. So since there's a difference of three there, we would call this three plus. And we put positive because there's more positive things than there are negative. This is how we can determine the charge of an ion and why ions form. So if we go back to the periodic table, what we note then is that things in column one will form plus one charged ions. Things in column two will form plus two charged ions. Things in column three will form plus three column, plus three charged ions. Sorry about that. So plus three. Things in column four, this is where it gets tricky. They could be plus four or they could be negative four. It depends on whether it's acting as the positive ion or the negative ion. Things in column 15, because they'll have five valence electrons, they only need three to fill their shell. So if they gain three, they gain three negative pieces, they become negative three charge. Column, things in column 16, so those elements, they'll become negative two. Group 17 will become negative one charge. And remember, our noble gases don't gain or lose electrons because they have full outer shells, so they will not become ions. This is a quick way, using our periodic table, how we can tell what charge an element will have when it becomes an ion, which is very important when we get into bonding and nomenclature.